two. And the color is going to be new color. That's going to be color dot white. We want no color differences to the textures, so that's what color dot white does. And then we need the screen alpha, which is from the screen game screen class. Now that's done, we do sprite dash dot end. Okay, so let's worry about the draw fade method. Private, and it's private because it's nothing else but the inside of the class is going to access that. Public void draw fade. And we have a sprite batch and viewport object here. But we do not have it in the draw fade, so let's just pass those sprite batch, sprite batch, viewport, viewport. Now again, to do some more correction that way we won't have any build errors or errors during the runtime. If pixel is not equal to null, which means a pixel exists. We're going to do the sprite batch dot draw the pixel and a new rectangle. And we use a rectangle so we can fill up the entire game window. Viewport dot width and viewport dot height. And the color will be a little bit different. We have a fade color, the color we set in the properties up here. And we need to use a fight cast. And that's going to be the fade opacity times times 255. And you can do more um, error correction and stuff like that because if you have a fade opacity greater than 1 you do not want the opacity greater than one, so you can worry about that on your own. And then we just uncomment this draw fade as the sprint match and the viewport. And then we go back to this line and decrease the indent. And we save it and there we go. Now for S F five, we have no build errors, so we can continue. So that was all the parent screen, and it was a pretty long task to do. Now what we need to do is actually create a intro screen, which simply means we need to drive this and create our own intro screen. And it's not going to be a parent screen, so we put it in the screens folder. But before we do that, I need to go to my desktop and get my logo I want to show and a single pixel and these will be provided or they're also provided on the uh, a space shooter tutorial but I'll also provide those and we just drag those to the content folder or sub project alright so now that we have our content our logo and our single pixel we can go into the screens folder right click go to add class and go here and it's I'm just gonna call it logo screen so all we're gonna do is show the logo of the website and again namespaces have to be equal unless you want to add additional using statements above it's gonna be public and it's gonna drive from intro screen Now public logo screen and the intro screen takes care of the transition on time and transition off time. So all we need to worry about is the screen time, how long it stays active. So 
to the time span that from seconds and I chose 3 for a nice quick effect and then the fade color I'm just going to use color.black and it's not going to like that until I add the using color.black and finally the fade opacity 0.9 F 90% opacity alright so that's it for the constructor all we're doing is just setting the intro screens properties we do not need to set the game screens properties because that is covered in the intro screen itself now this time we will need to override the load content because in the logo screen we know what we're going to load then we can delete the base.load content now in the previous tutorials we've used the content.load so, uh, less than the type you want to load greater than and then the asset name you want to use this time we don't have access to content unless we get the object reference from the screen manager itself. So this is a very useful technique. Take the screen manager dot game dot content. I have no idea why I cannot type today. So the panels game did everything or almost everything as a static value which means we just get to the class dot whatever we want to get to now we have went to a very object oriented approach which means we just can get everything from an object and we do not need to use any static but we sometimes will use static for purposes I'll dis discuss later on so that we have the content manager we can properly load our content so we have our texture object which is a texture 2d content.load less than the type we want which is a texture 2d greater than parentheses and the location of our texture and the asset name and you can just click the content you wish to load and you'll go to the properties and find the asset name and you just need to write that in quotes and there we have it then we have a pixel is equal to content dot load same thing text 2d and then asset name just single click go down to the properties window find the asset name copy it paste it in quotes and there we go. So now what we have to do is is actually get this working. And we need to add that to the screen manager and let the screen manager take over. So game1.cs needs some work done. And I'm going to modify the width and height of the game. And to Modify the resolution of game. You use uh, graphics that preferred back buffer width and height. Now I'm actually going to do width first. I'm going to use 1280 and then graphics that preferred back buffer height is equal to 720. So we use HD 720p resolution. Now 